welcome to a new episode. Um, again, this is remembering, uh, thinking, exploring, uh, try to make sense of it. So, well, thank you for listening. It's always me, <clears throat> and I know it's been a while, but um, I thought about recording something just to keep you updated with uh, where I'm at. So, um, university is going okay, the research is going <laughs> Let's say okay. Uh, at the moment, my research is a lot of very colourful post-it notes on different sheets of paper with scribbling in pencils and sharpies and different colours and different sizes and texture and things written down and trying to make sense of everything, which is good because this is the process at the beginning. And if I were to tell you this in eight months' time, I would start worrying that I haven't gotten anywhere. But I'm happy with how things are going now. So university is good. I really, really enjoy uh, the interactions on a Monday when we are having lectures and um, which um, I'm auditing as in I'm participating even though I don't actually have to present any, any assignments, do any assignment for that module. So that is good. Um, I woke up 55 uh, yesterday, so that was also good. Meaning that I'm, I'm still here, I'm still happy and, and uh, still more convinced in some of my ideas. And some of my ideas are about the main topic of these things. Because I think there is a need to, for me to vent out uh, about a frustration. So I went to this Eat, Sleep, Research, Repeat conference. At York St. John, and I found it interesting. There were um, a lot of amazing speakers. Uh, some are funny, uh, all of them are deep, and you can see the, where they are going, etc. But boring to death. Because, I'm not joking, out of 19 presenters, 14, in a way or another, had to do with mental health. Now, you all know that I am a psychotherapist by trade. So even when I'm out and I'm, I'm thinking about research and I'm thinking about, I don't know, my own stuff, spirituality, art making, mark making, um, where the pencil is going, the thickness of the paper, how corrugated it is, how thick it is, what's the grammage, I, I, all of these things. Having still to deal with mental health, it's really a pain. So I'm going to say something here, which I've also written in one of my written blog posts. Um, and, I, and this is what I wrote, that how much mental health I know is important. Um, I found that um, the overuse of the terminology, um, it's boring and, and it's just pain. What can I say? It is a bit pointless. And it feels to me that there is, okay, let's put it this way. Call me insensitive, uh, but I've got to say it. Um, I wish people would stop using the word uh, mental health when it has nothing to do with mental, i.e. with the brain from a um, psychiatric perspective, because most of the time it is, and I'm using quote unquote in a sarcastic and ironic way in here, it is simply emotional health. Uh, this uh, doesn't detract from the importance of emotional health, but emotional health is one thing, mental health is something else. And most of the times these two words are actually pff, emotional health and emotional vulnerability is never used. Most of the time it's just, it's just mental health and pff, used completely out of context. And I really wish that people would um, take and, well, let's say, that I wish that people would stop using the wording mental health um, out of context um, and especially just to sort of like raise the mental health flag of look at this you know it's almost like a validation and importance of their own research because I don't know I'm studying I don't know um, the noise of um, spiders um, the noise of spiders creating webs because that could affect the mental health of the person sleeping in the bedroom. Do you get what I mean? It's, it's just like everything seems to be mental health now. 
So uh, just for the sake of funding or belonging to the, the you know, the cool uh, researchers group and to give validity to their own research. Or sometimes because there is no variety, it's just mental health, mental health everything and mental health everywhere. Um, and yes, I've got to repeat, just because I am a... Uh, belonging to the emotional vulnerable practitioners or the practitioners got to do to deal with emotional vulnerability uh, I would be nice for once that this mental health flag would not be raised just um, in anything and um, and also from an existential perspective which is my take I would like people to real to realize that there is a thing called life where things fortunately or unfortunately happen and it is okay even if they are unfortunate it is okay this is this is part of life this is part of the existential therapy uh, life sometimes is shit life sometimes throws you melon and you are not even able to make a lemonade and and it is okay because that is part of life and we can't keep on sort of like overly support uh, everybody, overly support. I've been using this term because otherwise there is no growing. You can't keep on pampering and shelter and overly identify and overly label people. I had somebody calling me neurodivergent the other day and I thought, well, I didn't know you were a psychiatrist. Um, just labeling and branding people just for the sake because you've learned a new word is detrimental to you uh, because also you sound a bit silly 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 um, and it's detrimental to you and it's detrimental to the people who really are suffering and where there's been an official diagnosis about your mental health so the health of your mental side of your body having said that out of this um all of these 19 presenters that I've mentioned were um, British, British nationals, uh, British funding, British people. Uh, there were there other uh, presenters who were non-British, but belonging to the Eastern part of Europe, so Eastern Europeans. And guess what? Not bothered at all about any stuff of the mental health. So 100% of their research was just focused on their research. Uh, they were not uh, justifying or explaining the funding of their research. There was a research, for example, on earthquakes. And I mean, me knowing about earthquakes because of a personal experience in life, I know how much that affects mental health. But he was intelligent, wise, um, um, enough, just not even to mention that his research could potentially help or bring uh, sort of like a sense of pacifying to the mental health of people who are incurring or living in places where earthquakes are. So I think that that's just got to do a lot with culture. And this is a part of a little sort of like a post research that I did on a conference about research. Um, so yes, so that that's where I'm at. And it's already eight minutes and I'm talking um things are going okay i think i think that my my voice is coming out um i'm saying things that um i find important which which i think is important in itself so having said that again thank you for listening because this is of course the status of my mental health i'm only joking um so uh, thank you for listening if you were listening and onwards and upwards ciao so this is it one episode's done now more journaling more thinking uh, more walking outdoors and elucubrating, which is always a good verb to use. So if you want to know more about me, you will be able to find me on Instagram and you are able also to find me on my website, which is www.matildetaumat.com. Okay, see you around. Bye.